ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining in for today's brief video after which i think i will never again be in a position to deride shoe fetishists or watch fetishists or <laughs> all those other people of whom i now have become apparently a part just my gig is the book 8088 computer a modern type of dos laptop with 640 kilobyte of ram a minuscule cf card like compact flash card as hard disk and well all the pleasures of the 1980s and what i am having here are two different exemplars of it namely the original book 8088 which is also uh, well in a way my favorite and which is going to feature here in many other videos as well as my new temptation oh, my lover <laughs> being the second version of it and this one has a serial port and that of course permits me to attach to it a mouse and and herewith i would like to straight away confirm that the genius gm6 mouse that you will find online perhaps even cheaper and easier than the microsoft mouse is perfectly working with it now to compare the both units perhaps from the outside before i switch into uh well functional comparison yeah this one has been a combat veteran already of, of quite some adventures <laughs> but nonetheless uh, if you if you disregard this so they look very similar but already if you turn them up you can notice that their layout is somewhat distinguished distinguishable so you're having here in the original model the one without the serial port the battery inside not that it is unexchangeable but it's let's say uncomfortable to exchange one day whereas in the new version the battery compartment is possible to be opened without much adventure and the battery can be detached other than that you see here in the original this field with a cga adapter actually and in the new version we are having here a different chipset which is also allowing VGA. I have not yet tested whether the new version is or is not going to overheat its mathematical coprocessor, something which if inserted in the original model in this department here is definitely happening. You will see future videos by me on this topic. So this is something I have not yet tried. It is, however, featuring here the same slot. There seem to be a couple of differences in the layout of the motherboard, like not on the upper side. Here they look pretty much identical, but if you clap them back in, then you will see that here the, the arrangement of other chips, like up here, for instance, close to the CF card, has also somewhat changed. It will remain to be seen whether that will make the USB perhaps more functional, but definitely there has been made a deeper redesign of the platform. Let's put it that way. And yeah, I'm excited to have the new Thingy that should allow me to work on the Microsoft Windows with a mouse. Now, both units are operating with Windows 3.0 under MS-DOS and they boot somewhat differently, which we shall now henceforth examine a little bit further in functional detail. Allow me to adjust the camera. All right, so there we go. I will now adjust my Genius GM6 mouse, which by nature has a DB25 serial port. One might say that for the era, DB25 would be the more authentic thing, right? Rather than DB9. The trouble is that most modern peripherals you can find are using DB9. So these guys had to make some sort of compromise and they picked a DB9 serial port. And if you have such an original mouse, you can attach it with such a like big male to small female adapter, which I shall herewith do. 
Now the GM6 Genius mouse is not 100% Microsoft mouse compatible. It has three buttons and if it is not driven by its like native driver, then it will not be recognized by the Microsoft driver. But this is an issue you can circumvent by pressing any of the buttons during boot, something we shall now experience. But let me turn on briefly both units. And as I do so, I will also start pressing this button so that the, um, so that the mouse is recognized as a Microsoft mouse and will then operate in a two button mode. Okay, so haven't figured out how to do this quite simultaneously, but let's just go ahead. This one and that one. Okay, and pressing. Yeah, I am pressing. What was the issue with you? Okay, so as you can already see, they have apparently fixed the screen here. This thing has a much darker screen. This screen is way better readable. Uh, in the video, it doesn't even look as brightly as a difference as in reality. Here, you, could all, you can perhaps also read that the Microsoft mouse driver has been installed. All right, now, as this is going, I can already type win to start Windows. Oh yes, and here I don't even have Windows. <laughs> Whoopsie days, yeah, I'm, I'm having an experimental running. So this, this is the old one. And for showing the screen difference, I, I think that's pretty much enough till here. This one, unfortunately, I'll turn it off for the time being. It would need another hard disk to be operable. But anyway, I think you might be more interested to see does the mouse work in the new thing? And it does. And let me increase somewhat the screen. So here we go. This is a pristine system. And uh, now it is operating by way of the Genius mouse. So I have a fat mouse cursor, like as big as my fingernail. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a completely pristine system and uh, this is the second time I'm turning it on actually and this is you, you would think this is as slow as it gets and surely there is some truth to that however actually this processor is faster than the one which is advertised. Advertised is an Intel 8088. The Intel 8088 is actually about like double as slow as the thing which is inside, the thing which is inside being a NEC V20, NEC V20 processor, which is an awesome little gadget and that I will certainly go more into in, in, in other videos. Here I'm having some window which is talking about the mouse, the mouse control panel and to read me about the mouse. I don't don't want to do that. So what do we have? We are having here still Windows running in a somewhat strange mode. Theoretically, this is having VGA, but I'm not sure that this is running in any VGA mode. The whole thing is still very, well, kludgy and, and, and everything looks cartoonish in, in a way. There is now actually here on the side as opposed to the previous version an audio out port i'm not sure you're seeing this very well so this is an line out port would have been great if they had made also line in right <laughs> so that you can record sound on the dos but that unfortunately is not possible anyway we are having here some some uh, wave device things, if I am interpreting this correctly, which there is no warranty of. So, yep, that's that. We're having here the file manager that we shall look into just in a moment. Then we're having here also the control panel and Windows setup. And we are having here as games reverse and solitaire, no minesweeper. I mean, no minesweeper? Why do I even own a computer? <laughs> Okay, uh, what does this control panel do? What does the control panel of a pristine 
Windows 3 installation offer. So we can adjust the color, but stark black and white for the little memory we have is likely the best part anyway. We are having fonts, we are having ports. Okay, very interesting. And we're having the desktop. What can I adjust in the desktop? Can I adjust anything in the desktop? I could set a wallpaper and I could set a pattern and so on and so forth. Now, certainly not. Doing so would only increase the load on the CPU. And while the CPU is double as fast as in the original IBM PC, it is painfully slow without doubt nonetheless. Anything to be done about color? Yeah, color, I double click it, I'm waiting. Yeah, we're having here a sand clock with, with some white background. Awesome. <laughs> so so you see, I can, I can select different variations of black and white here. I don't care about that. So I'm closing this and yeah, close. Good, good. And now let us try Windows Setup. <clears throat> it is so cool. We have to wait for everything. You know, when people think retro was cool, in their memory they are cutting out this waiting time. But everything took a while. Yeah, the display still is CGA, just as I supposed. So it has not been switched in any way to VGA. I mean, change system settings, let's see. I'm not even sure that it would be permitted to change to VGA, but if it is, I mean, why not? So here we're having CGA. Oh, I apparently can now pick VGA with monochrome display. That's definitely what I'm going to pick because that is going to require less storage space per pixel. You see, while in a standard super primitive display, each pixel would take up a byte. A true monochrome display is just using a bit per pixel. And I'm going to, to be using that no mouse or other pointing device is just untrue. Microsoft or IBM PS2. I mean, come on, it's not fair. It is a Microsoft mouse connected to, to COM1. Okay. I mean, I wonder how this was working. Was it a DOS driver which was forcing itself upon Windows? Will I now mess it up by having switched on the Windows driver? We shall see in a second. <clears throat> or maybe multiple seconds. Hasn't frozen. Not yet. Hmm. And we're waiting. Look, I'm gonna put you on break because I really don't know how long we will be waiting. The thing is not completely frozen, but it's not doing anything either. Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> well, I'll have to cancel this. I don't have the Windows 3.0 setup disk number two. But I am sure that if I were to procure whatever is on it, pack it into a directory under drive C and then access it, that then I could perhaps somehow proceed. But for the time being, I'll have to press cancel and I'll have to live with what I have. And I'll just say cancel. And I'm going to wait and pay with my lifetime for my mistake. Q. 
curiosity killed the cat and well we shall see what it kill me too now I did get from an image of Windows 3.0 disk 2 the files into a folder in here and we shall once again again try to change the resolution and when I'm talking of Windows 3.0 disk 2 this this is a fascinating question because really which disk 2 there was the 1.2 megabyte on 5.25 inch floppies edition as well as the three and a half floppies edition both of which having somewhat different disks too let's see what it wants let's see how it works yes windows setup Yeah, and now options, change system settings. I'm not even sure it's a very good idea to change from CGA. It will look somewhat finer, more refined, more beautiful, but will be more performant and more useful. Uh, it's more, more questionable than one would assume, but I don't want it. As VGA, I want VGA with monochrome display. And better I don't touch the mouse. Let's just see what will happen. Because if it is a Microsoft mouse, I can still, you know, I can still turn this on. Okay, now we'll be waiting for an eternity, which I'll spare you. And then it will ask us for the folder where to find things. Ha! There we go. Okay, just let's navigate the cursor, delete the A, write the C, and say that it was in V2. Okay, and then enter. And now what? I mean, will it do anything? Aha! Uh -huh. Setup is installing fonts. Oh god, I apparently need to get a whole installation here. Okay, well, there's no comfortable way of doing this right now. <laughs> my only way okay I'm now having an issue I don't have the USB going here my only way of exchanging information with my main Linux machine which has everything is actually through having such an SD card uh, adapter like such a compact flash card adapter actually so this thing here takes out the hard disk from there and essentially puts it in here if I now take out this, the hard disk of a moving system, would this break it? Because if I turn it off, I am interrupting the middle of its installation. I'm not sure this is a very good idea. So, if I don't want to turn it off, and I cannot get the information through any other means, then that means I'm going to remove now the CF card of a running system. This is going to be really Frankenstein-esque. Okay, <laughs> here is its brain. I, I feel like in the scene in Terminator 2 where they're taking out his chip. Well, Sarah Connor is psyching around wanting to smash it. Well, so let's put it back in. And this time let's put an entire set of Windows setup disks onto this thing. And let's hope that this in the meantime will not try to do anything like blank my screen or anything. Can I even move the mouse? Oh my God, I can move the mouse while its brain is gone. Okay, cool. I'm putting on a, on pause while I'm getting all the files. Great, I got everything. Now let us continue our Gemini rocket program. And, and we go. And so you wanted to have, oh, 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 it froze. It was working so far.
But the moment I inserted the disc, it froze. <sighs> Restart. It's the only thing I can do. And hope that I will not have to install Windows from floppy images. Ja, ja, ja. Boot, boot. Oh, yes, I will need to press the button here. Haha, <laughs> pressing here the button so that the mouse is recognized as a Microsoft mouse. Starting MS DOS. And yes, mouse driver installed. I'm a happy man. Typing win. Again, a beautiful Windows boot. And let me get to where we were. So this is like an edge of tomorrow, right? We needed to repeat all the steps, but this time to do one thing differently. Okay, so we're not gonna have CGA. We really wanna have VGA with monochrome display. We're going to say, okay. It's installing the fonts. That's sweet. This time not asking me for the path, apparently remembered it. Hanging here a little bit, let's see. Alright, so that's interesting. After quite a wait, in which we did not again have to see, say where the, fur, where the disk 2 folder was, it is now straight asking for the fifth floppy set and I have copied the files into a folder called v5 okay this is always quite a wait which I am um, well sparing you just actually while we wait I want to make one further comment about the comp port the COM port, ah, good that I copied everything, the COM port COM1 does not seem to be liking to be working over a three wire connection. I tried to connect it to my Linux machine and it refused. However, the mouse is working, so we know that in fact the machine is having a functional COM1 port. I assume or suspect that the control lines are active somehow and I need to shorten these out before it works. But I'm just telling you if you buy this machine and, and the COM port is not communicating, that does not necessarily mean that it's not working. Just beware that it might be wanting all these, you know, CTS, RTS and whatever other things there were. Okay, what will you do now? Disk number two again. Okay, V2, aggregate fear. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna do that? I said okay. Yeah, I may say a lot of things when the day is long. And disk 5 again. Oh, 5 is here. Your system settings have been changed. You need to restart Windows. Restart Windows. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Hello? Hi. Are you there? What is this? Is this operational? Should I be just patient? Should I restart it? Is it out of electricity? Like what is it doing? Uh, what What is the blinking here? By the way, in the previous version, this area was not marked 
Oh, the battery is in fact blinking. Well, well, let me connect the charger and we shall continue. Well, I will reset it because I don't see anything doing anything. Okay, escape to skip this memory testing. And I am pressing the button, yes. My trusty GM6 new old stock mouse. Is getting recognized as a Microsoft mouse, saying win. And now the moment of truth. And hopefully not as anticlimactic as the previous time. Ah well. I think this falls under the category not good, you messed up your windows, Nino. Ah well. <laughs> that that truly is somewhat regrettable. We now no longer see a thing. Yeah, I think with that today's episode will end as I messed it up and I'll have to fix it. <laughs> but this is not something I can do today. So thank you very much for joining. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you saw some of the main differences between the old and the new book 8088. The old one having, by the way, whiter stickers, the new one having such more violet ones. Perhaps this is a way to distinguish them when you buy them. Screen is brighter. Everything is working nice, except when you mess up your windows trying to make it run on VGA. And with that, hope to see you here soon again. If you're not a subscriber yet, I would be thoroughly honored if you were to consider. Have a wonderful time till our next meeting. See you and goodbye. Post dictum. I'm starting the system now from the Windows setup which is on the first disk image of Windows, which I by now have on my hard disk. And here I have options to adjust the screen and I'm going to pick it this time VGA. Let's see what happens. Second post dictum, pure VGA does not work well. In fact, it makes such a radiation detection like sound. I'll try CGA now. Next post dictum, I am running Windows 3.0 setup and the only thing that seems to be working is indeed CGA. None of the VGA options, at least on my machine, would trigger successfully. Other than that, well, this is fun in its own right, right? I mean, how often do you think have I been setting up Windows 3.0 lately? So if you're curious, this is what it looks like. And yes, it is so slow that one wishes one had done a disk image before risking anything. <laughs> it's CGA, I'm finally back on stage. And what is interesting here is that I chose to review the changes it wants to do to autoexec.bat. And you see, it is proposing to use a Y flag on mouse. Like everything else looks pretty much the same. I'm going to accept that. Config sys, on the other hand, stays exactly the same. Excellent! Windows 3.0 is now installed. Reboot. And cool! The Y flag, uh, the mouse driver, installed my GM6, my Genie GM6 mouse, anyway, even without me holding down any mouse button. So if you want to make sure it's installed, put in the Y flag. If you want to have the option to not have it installed and maybe save some memory, don't have the option. I think that's the lesson here. And thus the adventure concludes in a successful and happy fashion.